Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, as I like to say before my talks, I, I can't take any credit for it tonight. Um, all the material we're going to cover uh, is from uh, three books. Uh, Thought and Life was uh, written uh, by the hand of uh, uh, Chico Xavier, uh, a medium. Uh, the Spirit Emmanuel uh, dictated, if you will. Uh, Genesis chapter 14, a few, a few sections of that, as well as the gospel according to spiritism. I had the pleasure, obviously, of putting the slides together, and I'll do my best today to impart uh, the messages with you. Um, it is a workshop, though, so that's good. I don't have to talk as much, and you guys have to talk. So um, if I point at you, no, I won't point. <laughs> I won't. I won't. <laughs> We're not teaching today, right? All right, so let's get started. How much time do I have, Valdo? Three hours, yeah? Right. Yeah? Correct. No. I'm going to do my best to finish by 7.40. Um, but there's a lot of material. We probably could have made this uh, two workshops. But let's, let's jump into it. Uh, the book, uh, Thought and Life, um, wasn't, uh, the, the material in it wasn't really initially uh, in a book form or a message to, to people like us that are walking the earth that are incarnated. It, it's actually content. It's actually instructional material provided to spirits uh, on the other side, right, before they reincarnate. So they've died in a previous life. They go to the spirit realm, and they recover, and they educate themselves. They get healthy, and they make a plan to come back, right? And this is the pep talk, if you will, that they're given before they reincarnate. Uh, so at some point, Emmanuel thought, uh, hey, we should probably share this with people that are walking the earth, because it could probably really help them. Um, and essentially, um, the key point of this book, and it's amazing how you opened happy life to prayer. Because as we, it doesn't say prayer up there necessarily, but as we go through this talk, you're going to find that uh, prayer is a big piece of it. And I bet you nine times out of ten, what you open up in happy life ties in, into these talks. So anyways, let's, uh, let's move on. Um, but the key point with this book is, is, our, is our thought process pretty much dictates where we are in life, um, where we, what we're dealing with, what we're succeeding. Uh, getting through, um, and it's the thought process that creates, right, that kind of life that we lead. Um, the mirror of life is talked about um, in this book heavily. It, it's, it's probably the main, the main uh, process or the main point. In other words, if you look at your mind, the mind is the mirror of life. Uh, what you think about, how you talk, um, how you interpret what other people do to you. Um, they call it the mirror of life. Um, and they point out that primitive minds, right, so lower evolved spirits like, like humans in, in a lot of ways, right, um, uh, various stages there, but, but we're, we're still moving up the evolutionary ladder, right? So primitive minds initially, when we're created simple and, and lacking knowledge, really driven by instinct. And as we evolve, right, we're guided more by love. And the mind, essentially, is the field of our awakened consciousness. As we open our mind, as we expand our mind, as we gain knowledge and, 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 and grow morally, um, we've, we have this awakened consciousness um, to help us down the road of evolvement or evolution. Um, so if the mind is the mirror, Emmanuel tells us that the heart is the reflection of, of us um, in the sense that our emotions, right, is, uh, is right here in, in our heart. When we are emotionally attached or we react emotionally or we experience an emotion, what does that do? They tell us that that creates ideas, right? So we have emotions, that stems from the heart, but then ideas form in the brain. And what, what happens, right? The brain generates the force of thought. And look at all those things that he talks about. With our mind, right, what does it do? It creates our reaction to those emotions. It can transform the way we live based on the emotions we're feeling. It can destroy the path that we're on if we let it, right? If we act uh, temperamentally or irrationally to some of those emotions. Um, and it also helps us rebuild. Now notice when you go through times of trouble in life, um, heavy traumas, uh, severe low points, if you will, and, and, you, and how you rebuilt yourself through those tragedies, right? Um, the mind can do so many things because of how it, it helps us overcome the emotions of the heart. And the term they use is mental reflexes. So we have emotions, we feel them, our brain creates these different ways to, to deal with them and work through them, and it produces a mental reflex, right? 
And Emmanuel calls these mental reflexes the core of life because our thoughts define us in so many ways, right? What do they say here? We all affect each other in creation. So we all have our own mental reflexes. We all interact with ourselves as well as impact the lives of others. So how we affect each other is a direct reflection of where we are in relationship to the objective of the creator, which is what, right? It's evolution of our spirit. Because of... Um, the way we, I, I, I've, I've, I look at it like this. When you go through some of your heaviest challenges, the way you respond to those really defines your character and, and defines who you are, right? Because when you're at your lowest is when you can make some of your, your worst or your best decisions. And um, according to Emmanuel, this defines where we are in relationship to, that, to, to God's mission for us, which is the evolution of our spirit. So let's look at question one. You know, I didn't pick up a paper. Would you mind handing me one? I should know this, right? I did write the questions, actually. I guess I can t take credit for that. So let's, let's talk about question number one. What is the goal or destination, if you will, of spiritual evolution? So I invite you. It's your turn to participate. This is where I get a break. Any thoughts? What, what's, what's my ultimate goal? What's your ultimate goal? Not just of uh, this lifetime, right, uh, but of your spirit, which is eternal, of your soul. Anybody care to offer? I don't have enough paper for everybody. Don't have enough paper? Uh-oh. Uh oh. Yes, ma'am, Stacy. Not everyone wants to be part of life. Did you think about it? Not everybody what? Want to be part of life. Many of us came here without giving consent, and many of us are not happy being here. Fair enough. And many of us don't want to be part of it. You have to take it into consideration. You definitely, you definitely have the option to opt out, for sure. Um, but I would think I would counter with simply saying that um, you have that opportunity to to go down that path or to change. Uh, we should look at both sides. Yeah, absolutely. You got to look at both sides, right? We'll talk a little bit about that for sure. I'm sorry. No, please don't apologize. Jump in any time. Um, but um, the any other ideas? Just feel free to join the stage with two times. Perfection. Perfection, yeah. Perfection, absolutely. In what sense? So emulate the way he lived, huh? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Any other thoughts? To become a pure spirit. To try to evolve to a pure spirit, yeah. Where we, and, and that definition of that is uh, overwhelmingly, your, your thoughts and your actions are what? Driven by, by love, right? Love and charity. Um, yes, ma'am? Do you have kids? I have three daughters, yes. I'll want, show you pictures later. Thank you. Do you want your kids to be better than you or like you? I want my kids to uh, follow their path. Um, whether they're like me or not, I'm, yeah, I'm okay with it. you want them to be better than you are, like you? Depends, depends on your definition. I want them to be them. I want them to be comfortable in their skin, be comfortable with who they are. Um, and I, it's a long story, but I'll share a little bit with all of you. Um, I grew up very afraid of death, very afraid of life in a lot of ways, um, not comfortable in my skin for many different things. Um, and what I've learned as part of my development or my evolution um, is I have no expectations of my children to be like me. If they disagree with me on beliefs, if they disagree with me on career choices, um, I, I want them to, to, I don't want them to be happy, and I'll explain what I mean by that, okay? I, I think happiness is the result of them being comfortable in their skin being able to make their own decisions, being able to follow uh, that golden rule, you know, uh, respect others, uh, respect themselves, uh, love life, and, and, and do their best to do good in the world. Um, and if that um, doesn't agree with um, the way I live, right, I'm okay with that. Um, for many years, I tried to be what my father wanted me to be, and it, it took decades for me to, to get past that. I'm 50, and I'm almost comfortable in my skin now. But I have an eight-year-old daughter that's more comfortable in her skin than most people I know. And I'm very proud of that. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll talk more later about that. It's just most parents, they want their kids to be better than them, like more educated. What's better, though? Hmm? What's better? You don't know what's better? No, but, but who's, who defines better, I guess, is what I'm saying. But our actions, though? Yeah, but if, so I have a doctorate degree, right? I'm Dr. Turi, right? Um, 
I have no expectation of my kids going to school and becoming a doctor. Could if they become better than you. you what's, but, but, what's, but what's better than me? If, if my oh, daughter... Come on, you don't know what's better than you? I'm pretty bad. You don't you don't know a lot about me. I've, I've made really bad choices in my life. <laughs> you, know, you, know what I mean? you know what I mean? Um, but I hear what you're saying. And and to answer your question, I, I think that's a common. You probably asked the wrong guy because I grew up in a house where I was expected to be better than my dad. No matter what I did, I could always do better. Straight A's, uh, A pluses, honor roll, scholarship. You, you name it, right? Um, you could do better. So I grew up never feeling like I was good enough. And I'm I, sorry to hear that. It's okay, I'm, I'm growing, it's awesome, because I'm growing. And now I have an example to, to raise my children differently. So thank, um, you. thank you for making me think about that, because I don't always think about that. Um, thank you for making me um, examine that part of me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my kids. Um, we're moving down that path. All right, hey, what I forget, the announcements. All right, here we go. Um, so we talked about question one. Did, what, did I miss anybody? Did anybody else want to contribute? No? All right. Because um, we talked about it. You touched on it. Um, you mentioned it uh, for sure. Um, this is a graph, uh, a, a visual representation of spiritual evolution. All right? And you hit the nail on the head, Adelaide. Um, the goal, right? Remember, we... We believe that uh, reincarnation is, is a law. It happens, right? We uh, were all created simple and lacking knowledge, equal, if you will, many lifetimes ago. All of us in this room now are on a path um, that have put them where they are. That's why there's so much difference among us, right? We're very similar, but yet we're very different. And to me, that explains uh, the fairness in the world, right? That life is fair in the sense that we all kind of put ourselves on this graph based on our choices. And that is the answer to, uh, to question number one, at least for this talk, um, where we are ultimately destined to become um, guided by love and charity at all times, elevating ourselves to, to, to be a pure spirit. So how do we progress is the question. So we, we understand where we started, we understand what the goal is, but how do we, how do we progress up that, 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 uh, that um, process? How do we go through that? Which leads us to the second question, right? What determines where we are in that progression from life to life? What determines that progression? Any thoughts? Any, any contributions? Yes, Stacy. One is personal and the other one is collective. Okay. Personally, okay. It like how we feel and how others may feel. Perfect. Well, so I, what I'm hearing you say is uh, our personal reaction to others and then also how we interact with it, with the good. Perfect. All right. That's a what great... Where we are and vice versa. Perfect. I love it. That's a great answer. Any other thoughts? Anybody have a different idea? Because that's almost solid. I mean, that's solid. I think Stacy answered it for us. Anybody else have a different idea? I think it's a very individual. Yeah, the individual for sure. We all we all make our own way, right? Yeah. How do we do that? Um, trying to see you know, bad things that you have for yourself and try to get it better. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And the, and your choices. Today determine your tomorrow? No. Not like that, actually. No, you don't think? Okay. Yeah. All right. Day by day. Day by day. All right. Yes, Stacey. Oh, sorry. I think we will uh, try to do the best we can, but uh, we can. Some days. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to be better than anybody else, or I don't want, I don't, I know I cannot be like Jesus Christ, and that we never going to be because I don't want to be crazy. <laughs> but I know we are not both, we are not there yet. But I want to be the best I can okay. without hurt anyone, okay. without allowing one to hurt my will. And uh, it's like uh, being a better person and uh, make other people feel good about themselves. Okay. Well. Awesome. Okay. All right. So you grow by how you interact. So I think what all of you are saying in your, in your own way. Uh, um, yeah. What I, what I guess can say, like the whole different opinions that is going for one goal right now, that Jesus Christ is basically the mode that we, we want to get there. 
but uh, how he used to act, how he used to do things. The uh, way he lived. Yeah, not okay. where, where he lived is a, is a different uh, point. But um, how he used to do things, yeah. how he showed people how to do things. Awesome. And this is the point of be a better human being that you can be. Sure, and progress, not yeah. Try to force yourself to do like in one minute, like Jesus Christ, not like that. Everything is have a process for that. Okay. And when you, not I'm saying you, I'm saying. I understand. Or, uh, when you say, oh, uh, like, how is going to be your process? Your process. People think that uh, it's going to. It's you asking to be quickly like that, and it's not like that. No, it's slow, yeah. Yeah, but you know what's amazing is uh, um, sometimes you have great moments of growth where you really grow a lot in a short period of time, and then other times it's like, you know, two one step forward, two steps back. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what I think what you guys are saying ties into to the to my, what I believe is the answer to this question and, and what Emmanuel tells us. Um, it's this, right? Cause and effect, right? We uh, from day to day, from life to life, um, the choices we make, the way we treat others and the way we react to the way others treat us create this cause and effect relationship. I'm, I'm a sum total right now of my experiences thus far in this life and all my lives before, right? I'm, I'm here in this place, in my situation because of me and because of my choices and how I use my free will. The world can throw stones at me, they can crucify me, they can, they can uh, discriminate against me. It only only holds me back. It only holds me down if I react in the wrong way to that, right? If I, if I return with vengeance or if I return with a desire to hurt or to get ahead by hurting those that hurt me, right? Instead of praying for them and having love in my heart, wishing them well on their path, not letting myself get tied up with that. It's how I impact, it's, it's how I let it impact me. All right, so that being said, going back to the book where they talk about the mind being the mirror and the heart being the reflection. Let's talk about that a little bit. How does the body, me, right now, I'm in this envelope, right? I've got this, these clothes on, right? This skin that I'm going to lose when I die. But the spirit, right? How I started, my real, my real being, right? That's eternal, right? How does, how does that interact, right? How does that, um, how does that exchange happen? How does what I do in this body impact my eternal spirit? And it's through this envelope, if you will, or this, not envelope, but um, this, this thing called a perispirit. In other words, for this exchange to happen, those mental reflexes that we talk about, as I walk the earth and I make choices with my brain, right, and I have these mental reflexes, the choices I make, the feelings in my heart, the, the actions that I take, the good or the bad that I do to others, imprints, right, transmits through this, this connection to my spirit, this para-spirit, and imprints on my spirit, right, where it's held accountable, where it's maintained. Um, and I can't tell you what's on that from previous lives, right? And what I can tell you is when this body dies, a lot of that's going to come back, and I'm going to relive the good, the bad, and start to make that plan like we talked about in the first slide. Um, so they call this, Emmanuel calls this uh, thought photography. Um, I have a thought, I have an action, I say a word, I have an emotion, and it's going to a, it produce a physical effect that reacts upon my moral state. If I, and I'm bad at this, I, I, I talk like a sailor sometimes, right? If somebody cuts me off in traffic, I, and when I drive, I'm still a type A sometimes, right? I just have no patience, right? I'm better, much better today. I don't blow the horn anymore, I don't, I don't tell people they're number one anymore, right? I don't do, I don't do that style and stuff, but I'll still, I'll still curse every once in a while. Um, um, so I'm not perfect, but I'm getting better. But when I do that, what am I doing? That anger inside of me, that, 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 that almost wishing them bad, right? That, that creates a, a permanent, if you will, uh, imprint, or it reacts or it reflects my moral state. I'm not there yet. I got plenty of work to do, right? So what else uh, does that? where you spend your time, right? Look, it's Thursday night, and you guys could be doing something fun. There's a happy hour someplace, or, or a football game, or something going on, right? But you chose to come to a spiritual center and listen to, to a talk, right? 
where, where you spend your time, who you spend your time with, right, um, is definitely going to impact your thoughts and it's going to definitely impact your spirit. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. All right. Now, here's the great news, right? <laughs> Remember I told you that I'm here, you're here, we're all in the place that we put ourselves by our actions. Emmanuel really reinforces that, right? He says, look, protection from all this opportunity to do bad and, and to be impacted by negativity, you've got protection within you. He says we each have a permanent energy source, and it's located in our perispirit, right? That connection between right now physically and, and my permanent spirit, right? It's that connection. And all it takes to defend ourselves from negative influences is purifying the source, kind of like changing an air filter, right? When, when, uh, when um, it gets dirty, right? Just purify the source. Get rid of that, that dirty stuff and uh, go in a new direction, right? He says that the soul's imperfections, right, is what attracts negative energy. So if I have a, a tendency to curse, if I have a tendency to, to spend time with, uh, with vice and um, uh, things that aren't so good, things that, you know, probably like how you mentioned how Jesus lives, right? If I spend more time being like Jesus, trying to emulate him, I'm going to spend less time being negative. And I'm, I'm not going to have as much negative energy. Um, I equate it to, uh, right, like, uh, he, he equa- Emmanuel equates it to, like, flies congregating to decay, right? Stuff that's uh, trash, right? He says, if you remove the decay, the flies move on. And in our own life as we live, right, if we are spending our time with negative stuff, if we're doing things that aren't productive, um, we're going we're gonna to attract negative spirits, because right? they hang out where negativity lives, which leads us to question three. How can we reduce the attraction of negative spirits to us? Yes, sir. I think the first step is realize that you are doing something negative. Okay. Okay, so you start understanding that what you're doing could be different. So okay. it's the thought process that you have in your mind. And then after the realization, then you can start changing. And there's several ways of changing. Like, for example, the the way you're talking about traffic, for example, I think <laughs> it's what happens to me a lot. And uh, I think somebody here in the center said that once, and uh, if somebody cuts me off, I automatically think, oh, he must be with the stomachache. Okay. So I gotta go to the bathroom really quick. So <laughs> instead of giving number one, I was like, hey, here's the toilet paper if you need, just, you know, just. Okay. So you know, I'm changing my thought. I'm changing my thought behavior. Awesome. Okay. So um, instead of focusing on the negative, I try to figure it out a way that I can turn that positive. Awesome. That's great. Any other ideas? Yes, Stacey. Um, How can I reduce we, the, yes? When we leave the dirty dishes in the sink uh-huh. and we ignore them, is it a good or bad thing? If you like dirty dishes in your sink, that's okay. If we ignore them, they're going to go out. Oh, if we ignore them, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Yes. So I don't recommend to ignore any spirit because if we ignore anything, we will become, uh, you know, we will become ignorant of it and later on we will not be able to recognize it. Okay. And then it will overcome us and then there are consequences. So ignoring it is kind of letting the decay pile up. No, we decay by ignoring it in a way. We can ignore it temporarily because it's not deal with Sure, it. you got to deal with it. But yeah. if we leave the dishes for too long, everything's going to... So how do you make sure your dishes don't pile up? What, what's your recognize answer to that question? You mentioned recognize. Recognize? It's not to recognize the difference between... Okay, so recognition is the first step. What's the next step? Any ideas? Change your thoughts. Change our thought? Yeah. All right, awesome. Change, uh, once you recognize, you, you, you're aware about the way you think that's a negative like, thought, the process, yes. it has changed. Try to um, get some positive to think about it, like for listening to a music. It's not, I don't think that's kind of, you're ignoring the negative, but you like, try to get something better. Like, switch. Okay, switch. switch. I call it changing your tapes. You know, the, the things you've been listening to that make you do the things you're doing, try to change what you're listening to. New CD or something. Any other thoughts? Any other answers? Y- yes, ma'am. What about acceptance? I Huge. Yeah, recognition, acceptance, yeah. You think recognition and acceptance is the same thing? I don't think so either. 
I think recognition is probably the first step, but acceptance is huge. Okay. I think that Thank you. I, I agree. Acceptance is very big. So I, I, I like the idea of um, feeding the positive. <coughs> feeling the positive. Feeding. Oh, feeding. Feeding the positive. Oh, feeding. feeding. I'm sorry. Feeding the positive. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I think it's a, one of the strategies to help us. Okay. Because uh, we have so much negative in us. So how do you? I'm going to ask the question one more time. Because everybody's, you guys got great answers, all of you. But how can you reduce the attraction of negative spirits? What's one thing we can all do more of every day? Pray. Awesome. She gets the gold star. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Okay. What did you say? Pray. 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 It's my next slide. It's got to be the answer. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, Stacy. But what if we have to recognize what drives us to that kind of uh, negativity? Then you haven't hit the recognition stage yet. Yeah. we're going to know. How to deal with it. First, we have to know what it is. Yeah. Deal with it. If it's us, we can change. Yeah. If it's others, we can breathe. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Right. We can try to talk to them and stuff. Like that. Absolutely. And we're actually that's if you if you look at question four, we're gonna get there. I promise. No, it's okay. Don't worry. Um, but you're right. You know that that's a stumbling block. That's something that holds us up, right? Um, recognition, acceptance, all those things are important. But at some point, we got to do some action. And the one action overwhelmingly that everybody can do, that can help everybody, according to a manual, right, in this book, is the action of prayer. And actually, I'm sorry, this is, this is, from, uh, this is from the gospel, uh, not from the first book, but the action of prayer. Because the way prayer is defined is a transmission of thought. And when you're praying, you're not usually praying negatively, right? Um, it's usually positive. You're, you're, you're asking, um, uh, if you will, uh, usually for positive things. But they define prayer as an invocation. And the gospel tells us that when we're praying, we communicate through thought, right, with beings that we are addressing. So that act of connecting, right, connects the link. Right? It opens the channel. It's like, remember the CB radios? You guys are younger than me, right? But when I was a kid, CB radios were huge. Breaker, breaker, one, nine. Come in, long bus or big truck or whatever. So you had, to, you had to push the button and initiate. You had to invite. You had to do that invocation. And then you got something back, right, usually, right? Um, but it opens the link. It, it connects the channel, right? So there's so many different ways for things to pray for. You can pray for yourself. You can pray for others, you can pray for the dead, you can pray for the living. And that energy, that, 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 that thought link, right? What they tell us here is to visualize all the beings. I'm not talking about just humans walking the earth, right? Think about people that have gone before us that are in spirit. Think about beings in, in other planets, in other realms, right? We're talking, we're talking the universe. We're not just talking about here, McLeod and Sweet 4D or whatever this is. We're talking about all the beings in the universe. And what do they tell us? All the beings and incarnate and discarnate, immersed in a universal fluid that occupies space, right? And they tell us to think about just as we're immersed in the earth, in the atmosphere, we're, we're engulfed by the atmosphere. We can't escape it unless we're Elon Musk and we can, we can get in a rocket and go, right? Um, but we are surrounded by atmosphere. And what they're telling us here is this fluid, this universal fluid that is everywhere in the universe. Um, is there. And the fluid, right, when I pray, when you pray, when you open the channel, when you make that connection, the fluid receives an impulse of the will, of the being that initiates it. And that fluid, right, or that, and that, and that vehicle uh, of the thought, just as air is the vehicle of sound. You open the channel, you pray to whoever you're praying to, whoever you're trying to connect with, um, and it, it's transferred uh, through that fluid. And the point here is, is j like a sound wave, right? Sound waves go and go, they propagate, right? But they have a termination, they, they die out, right? They, they end. Universal fluid, this fluid that connects the universe and all beings in it, has no limits, right? It goes and goes and goes, it never stops. When the thought is directed by a being, right? You or me, right? 
A fluid, fluidic current is established and the thought is transmitted. It's, it goes. When you think, it's out there. You can't pull it back. Right? You can change your thought, but that thought goes. Right? You've made that connection. You've sent that thought. And what they explain to this here is that this is how spirits hear us. We all, you know, there's, there's, we're not alone tonight. Right? There's plenty of spirits. We've all probably brought a few with us, and there are probably a lot here preparing for tonight as well because they know we have this meeting every Thursday night. But this is how they hear us, that's how they communicate amongst themselves, and that's how they transmit inspiration to us. So we also receive this energy. We receive um, um, direction, if you will, or influence from the other side. Um, we pray, they communicate, and it's all about opening ourselves up to be receivers of that information. And if you're spending a lot of time doing negative things, what are you surrounding yourself with? Negative influences, right? You pray, expel it, right? Bring positive energy to you, and the negativity goes away. And I think that's um, coming up in one of my slides. What they tell us here is through prayer, right, we call to ourselves a plethora of good spirits who come, right? We, we have uh, plenty of spirits looking out for us, right? They're there to help. They're there to guide they don't chase us down necessarily. They don't force us to change our ways when we're going down the wrong road. But if we connect, right, we make that connection and we pray, they're there for us. They don't turn us down, right? They provide us with the support and they help us acquire moral strength. It's really hard to do bad stuff when you're praying. I've experimented, you know. I, I, as I've told you in the past, I've got a few bad habits, right? It's hard for me to commit those bad habits when I say a prayer, right? It's, it's always positive. Um, so if we do more of it, we're going to acquire more moral strength. They continue here, that's, and they say that through prayer, here's the best part, right, I think. We can divert the negative spirits, right, that we've attracted to ourselves. So whatever we were doing before we walked in the door, right, maybe we were fed up in traffic and we, we, um, we were angry, right? We probably attracted some negative energy, but you came into the spirit to center. You maybe said a prayer when you came in or you connected with the opening prayer that we did. That positive thought, that, that thought energy uh, is creating a repelling effect to negative energy. Um, lower level spirits, uh, negativity, negative energy doesn't like positive energy. So pray, pick yourself up and disperse that negativity. It tells us here that prayer helps us resist temptation, and resisting temptation leads to moral living, right? And negative spirits move on. You want to get rid of negative energy in your life, negative influences? Do more positive stuff. Um, think more positively. Pray positively. And that leads us to our last question. And we could probably spend hours on this, uh, but we won't, because um, I'm getting close here. I'm almost late. Livia is going to pull me off here in a second. Um, <laughs> Tim will, that's right. Um, causes of ill, right? And there's two, there's two of these, right? Originating from things that we can't control. Who's got an example of what we can't control? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Others. Can't control. Okay, can't control others. True. Try, but they have their own brain. Absolutely. So you can't control others. What else can't we control? Anything else we can't control? Can't control the weather. Can't control the weather. All right. What else can we control? You know what I'm hearing? I think the only thing that we can't control is ourselves. Oh, you read the book. No? That's awesome. That's so true. The point here is A is a pretty short list, right? There's a lot of stuff that we can't, I mean, there's very little things, very few things that we can't control. We mentioned the weather, we mentioned how other people act. And there's other things. We could add a few more things to that. But look at B. Causes of ill originating from things that we can control. What can we control, to your point? You said, no, yours, uh, Stacey. You said other people, right? Yeah, but what can we control? How we respond to their actions. Yeah. So we can control. Think about, I, I can think about my own life, and you guys think about yours. I can't tell you how many things have happened to me because of the way I reacted to other people. So people, people can do anything they want to me. It can't hurt me or it can't impact me necessarily if I don't respond negatively. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Not Fair enough. Not okay. Me, I'm sorry, not me. That's okay. It's not okay. We don't have to agree. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, 
I don't want to distract you, but I can tell you, you know, some stuff like where it's true, it doesn't matter, like what you believe or what I believe. Sure. Well, but you tell me all about it later. No, it's okay. I, I, that's what we're here for, to share ideas, yeah? Um, so, what, what can we control? Give me some examples. Livia, come on. I know you can control something. Our thought, I heard our thought, the way we think, yeah? I think I can control my reactions when I'm really centered. Except when I'm in the room. I have a hard time. I mess her up. I crack jokes. And Okay. Uh, but if we still try to control ourselves, it really means we really don't control our thoughts, you know. And uh, sometimes I cannot even control myself when I see a cake. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it today. I did it today, though, Ruth. I did. I was in a meeting at the end of the day. It was a, a, a training. Uh, a, a rep came in to teach me a, a new software mm -hmm. for my patients. And she brought this big, beautiful box of cookies. And everybody was grabbing them and eating them. They, they, they had macadamia, they had M&Ms, they had chocolate chip. I didn't, ha I didn't have a cook. I was very proud of myself. I, did, I controlled that today. So the point with this is we, we could all make a list of the things we can control, right? And if we added that list together and we got rid of the, the duplication or the repetitiveness, that list would be huge, right? Because we can control a lot of stuff in our life. We can control who we spend time with. We can control how we react to people that hate us or people that do wrong to us. We can control um, what we put in our bodies. We can control our tempers. We can control how we love. We can shape the way we interact with people, right? We can do that so much. Why can we do that? Free will, yeah? We have a choice every moment of every day, right? I can, I can be a mean guy or I can be a loving guy. I can receive love from others or I can reject it. I can be a victim of all kinds of atrocities and I can be revengeful if I want or I can be loving if I want. I, I have that ability. God gave that to me. God gave that to you, right? It's ours. It's inside of us. It's written in our soul. And we <coughs> have the luxury and the responsibility, if you will, right? We're ultimately accountable for how we let others impact us and how we guide our actions, right? That other list on A, it's a lot shorter than B because we can pretty much control most part of our lives, most facets of our lives, right? These are the good news, right? The good news, that's right, the good news. All right, and then we leave with this message, right? Um, all that stuff I just told you, right? The power of prayer sets it all free, if you will, right? The power of prayer is in the thought, right? I tell my kids when we pray at night, um, at Gabriella especially, if you ever met Gabriella, she's, they're all awesome, right? But her, her, her uniqueness when and it's time to pray, she always says, Daddy, um, from the heart? Right? Right? Or, or can she just say they're our father, right? She, she loves to just say they're our father because it goes quick and it's done. She's, but, but she knows that it should be different, right? She's just, from the heart, Daddy? Yeah, from the heart, Gabriella. And, uh, and then she'll pray for, for a long time because she, she, well, she doesn't want to miss anybody, you know? Um, it's, it's beautiful. Um, but it's, it's, it's the thought, right? It's, it's from the heart, right? It's not connected to the words, right? The, the, the words are the words, but... It's the feeling and the thought when you pray. It's not connected to place or time. You can pray anywhere. You don't have to get on your knees or you can get on your knees. You can pray in the shower, you can pray in your car, you can pray in the elevator, you can pray at McDonald's, what, whatever you want. I try to pray when I'm in the drive-through line that I just pull out, right? So I don't order anything, right? Because right? Um, I don't need that stuff. But my point is you can pray anywhere, it doesn't matter. He says we can pray here at any time. True, yes, Stacy. I would recommend to pray where we don't get distracted, right? And you know, that's when we drive, we should not pray. We should pay attention to driving. Yeah, sometimes, uh, I hear what you're saying. You want to be safe, for sure. Maybe you should pull over when you pray. That's a good suggestion. Yes, otherwise we do not pay for attention to our thoughts. If we Fair enough. If we then, you know, we're wasting time out. Okay. Somebody would... Sometimes I gotta pray when I'm driving though, because I'm just gonna go nuts. But, <laughs> but, but I understand what you're saying. You want to be safe. You definitely don't want to hurt yourself or 
others when you stop to pray. Um, but um, you don't have to necessarily have a specific, um, you don't have to go to a synagogue or a temple or a spirit to center to pray. You can find a quiet space, you can you do it in the mall, you can, you can pray pretty much wherever you are, but you ought to be safe, I agree. Now, you can also pray alone by yourself, or you can pray in a group. What do you think is better? One person praying intently, deeply from the heart, maybe two or three people playing, praying intently and deep from the heart, or a thousand people in mass that come out for a protest, and some of them are really into it, and then others are just there saying the words. What do you think is stronger? Just more. Yeah, the more heartfelt. Yeah, that's what they tell us. Yes, Stacy. I thought if it's more personal because it's more honest. Absolutely, exactly. That's what we're saying. Absolutely. The more honest, the more heartfelt, the stronger it is. And that's, and that's the, the final line. The more heartfelt, the better it is. So when I was a kid, I learned how to say all kinds of prayers. And you had to memorize them, and you had different things that you held in your hand sometimes to pray, you know. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. But it became rote, right? Um, so from the heart, for yourself, for others, for those that have gone before us, for those that are still alive, whatever you want, right? Just from the heart. And I think the, I think the closing here is simply that we probably don't do it enough, that we probably could benefit ourselves from doing it more, and we should just try it, right, and see how it works out for us. I want to thank, yes, Stacy. Go ahead. How do you pray and say every day? Oh, I pray several times a day, yeah, not as much as I should, but uh, I definitely devote uh, quite a bit of time in the morning to meditation and prayer. I pray a little bit at night, and throughout the day, I'll say prayers with patience sometimes, I'll say prayers uh, for co-workers. Um, um, but yeah, it's not a hundred times a day, I don't think. How about you? Well, only when uh, I'm in need. Oh, fair enough. Because I don't know what's going on. You know, I've got this busy on my job. That's my assumption. Okay, fair enough. And yeah. there could be some more important things going on at this moment. So fair I enough. So if I can work it out between somebody, like if somebody makes me upset, I try to talk to them instead of God. Fair enough. I want to know what's going on. Sure. You know, that's what got done. You know why we behave like this, why this place is like this. Mm-hmm. You know, cool. talk to, you know, try to direct you. And, and you like, direct you know, communication is good, try. for sure. I got done, you know, try. It doesn't guarantee you get the right answer. They could be lying or they may not know it or sure. many things. Yeah, and I would, say, I would say in those situations where you're having your direct communication with a person that you, you have something going on with, when that breaks down, if it breaks down, and you find yourself demoralized or scared or seeking to make your point with yelling or fighting. I'm not saying you do that, but other people, right? I know myself, right? That's a great time to stop and pray, for sure. So I'm going to leave it there. I've, I've gone over time. I do apologize. I want to thank you for your time and attention. And um, uh, Livy is going to come, and I think, and do a vibration and a prayer for us. So thank you again for being here. Thank you.